time to pull up a chair. We've got another great story for you today in the R Lounge. Not everybody had your back. Today in the R Lounge, when friends become foes, the fallout is epic, and the lessons learned are unforgettable. Best friend made moves on my fiance. I banned her from the wedding, exposed her, and made her single. This happened almost a month back, but I was busy setting up a new life with my husband, hence this got delayed, but I think it's long awaited. It happened during my wedding last month. My best friend, Margot, 27 female, made moves at my husband, Sam, 32 male, at my wedding. I couldn't believe she would do such a thing to me. We had been such best friends since middle school. Though she moved out to a different state after high school, we remained in touch. She would visit her parents once or twice a year, and that's when we would hang out. For years, she was a person I could count on for anything, whether it was venting after a rough day at work or discussing family and relationship problems. She was there for me. However, now when I look back, I realize there were subtle hints here and there that didn't come out to be a red flag in isolation, but when you see holistically her behavior, it was right out there. The first one was when Sam, my fiance, and I had been dating for a little over a year. We were at a casual dinner with a few friends. Margo was in town. I invited her and she made an offhand comment that should have made me pause. Sam had just told a funny story about his day and Margo, with a sly smile, looked at him and said, If you weren't dating her, I'd probably try to steal you. Everyone laughed, including Sam, because it sounded like one of those playful comments people throw around in groups. Margo has always been quirky and has a dark sense of humor, so I didn't think too much. Now when I revisit the memory, I think there was something about the way she did it, the way her eyes lingered at him just a little too long, that rubbed me the wrong way. I brushed it off at the time, telling myself it was just her weird sense of humor. Then, earlier this year, just a few months before the wedding, Margo visited and we were out shopping. Sam's office is near a mall. After the shopping, we sat down for lunch and we happened to see Sam across the street with one of his coworkers. They were getting coffee during their break, nothing special. Margo squinted at the woman with him and said, You better keep an eye on him. Guys like Sam don't stay loyal for long. It felt more like a dig than a joke. I told her to stop being ridiculous. But instead of apologizing, she just shrugged it and said, I'm just looking out for you. I let it slide because if you take it singularly, she was just cautioning me, right? She also made a huge fuss over the bridesmaid's dress. OMG, that was such a pain in the butt. I had already chosen a color scheme. Soft pastels to match the garden theme of our outdoor ceremony. I sent all my bridesmaids the theme and everyone found dresses they loved and fit the theme perfectly. Everyone but Margot. She refused to settle on any dress complaining that all the colors in the palette looked washed out on her. She insisted we go with a deep, sultry red and said, I flipped out that red? It's not even part of the palette. It's a summer garden wedding. Soft tones are what we agreed on. But Margo wasn't having it. She tried to rally the other bridesmaids behind her, saying things like, Don't you all want to look hot at the wedding? Pastels make everyone look like they're blending into the background. However, my other friends didn't join her and said they would go by my choice. Margot then pitched the idea that she could wear red since she was the maid of honor and she would stand out from the rest of the bridesmaids. I eventually had to put my foot down and tell her that if she didn't want to wear the dress I'd chosen, she could sit this one out. That shut her up for the moment, but I could feel the resentment brewing. It was clear to me that she wanted to be the center of attention, even if it was my day. During this time, I realized she was not the kind of person she used to be. Also, this was the first time in many years that we were talking so much. Though we remained in touch, but it was not that we talked every day. It was once or twice a month, but we shared memes and regularly texted. I tell you, one cannot know a person's true colors unless they meet regularly because people can pretend very nicely through texts and long distance calls. But during the wedding preps, we were talking almost every day, discussing stuff about the wedding. Margot took great interest in my wedding preps. I didn't think it was odd because if it was her wedding, I would have taken a similar interest as she took. Despite all this friction, we came back to our terms. She made an effort to remain involved in the preps. However, things took an ugly turn in the infamous pre-wedding game. The day before the wedding, we had a pre-wedding bash. The event manager had planned some games. In one of the games, Sam was blindfolded and had to touch the hands of my bridesmaids to figure out which one was me. Innocent fun, right? Sam was blindfolded and laughed along as he awkwardly felt around for my hands. When he got to Margot, though, something weird happened. Instead of just offering her hands like the other girls, 
She leaned in and then pulled her hands near her face. And in that chaos, Sam's hands accidentally grazed her face. It was fun and everyone laughed. No one thought it was inappropriate or something. No one even noticed that Sam touched her face. It was for a fraction of a second. Such things happen in these games. No big deal, right? But then came Margot's comment, the one that sent shivers down my spine. After the game, we were all sitting around chatting. Margot leaned over to me and said this to Sam. I wish it was your lips instead of your hands touching my face. Actually, if it had been your hands, maybe they should be somewhere more fun. Everyone got awkward. Sam looked mortified, apologizing profusely, but then Margot burst out in laughter and brushed it off as a joke. She was like, come on guys, lighten up, her eyes darting between Sam and me. Everyone took it as a joke and laughed. Sam also laughed, saying she got him. I forced myself to laugh it off, but I couldn't shake the feeling that she wasn't joking. It wasn't just an innocent comment. It felt like she was testing the waters, pushing boundaries to see how far she could go. I thought of confronting her in the night as we shared the room. Sam and I were living separately for a week before the wedding. That's our family custom. However, that night, Sam and I got busy catching up with each other's family. By the time I went back to my room, it was pretty late. I was too drained to have this conversation with Margot. The morning of the wedding, she asked me to take the corner room of the hall because it had better lighting and would not be disturbed in the middle of my makeup. At the time, I didn't think much of it. I had a lot on my mind and the venue was busting with activity. But now I see it was all part of her sick plan. While I was in the other room getting my hair and makeup done, I heard the commotion and realized something was wrong. I immediately asked my dresser to stop. I rushed outside with my half makeup. Sam saw me and shot. Was this your plan? To test my loyalty? You used your friend to test me? I was shocked. What plan? What the hell has happened? I had no idea what he was saying. I swore to him that I had no clue whatsoever and asked him to tell me what had happened. Apparently, Margot called Sam and told him I wanted to see him privately before the ceremony. She asked him to come to our room that I had some pre-wedding jitters and needed to talk to him. Sam thought I was nervous or anxious. Casual wedding blues. He didn't hesitate. He didn't think twice and rushed to the room that Margot and I were sharing. But when he entered the room, it wasn't me waiting for him. It was Margot. I was in the other room getting dressed up. According to Sam, when he knocked on the door, Margot opened it. After he entered the room, she closed it behind him. Sam asked about me, thinking I was in the bathroom. She immediately started making suggestive comments, touching his arms and telling him how handsome he looked and how she wished she could have him just one time before he officially became mine. Sam freaked out and stormed out of the room, screaming, what the hell is wrong with you? He was furious and loud enough for everyone to hear. The noise from the hallway drew in other friends and family who found Sam practically shaking with anger. Margo came out of the room laughing like it was all some kind of hilarious prank. She pointed to her phone, which she had set up in the corner of the room to record the whole thing. Anger would be an understatement. I was an inch away from slapping her hard. I screamed at her. What was she even trying to do? To her defense, she kept repeating, I was just testing him. I wanted to see how loyal he is. Relax, it was a prank. I was just looking out for you. A joke. On my wedding day. Who gave her the right to test my fiancé? How dare she think of doing this without my consent? I couldn't even process the rage I felt in that moment. Sam looked hurt and betrayed and I could see the other bridesmaids were just as disgusted as I was. Without a second thought, I screamed at her to get out. She started crying, claiming that I was overreacting, that it was just her trying to be playful, but I didn't care. Initially, Sam thought I was part of the plan to test his loyalty. However, when he saw me kicking her out, he realized I was not on board with this stupid plan. He calmed me down, but not before I kicked Margot out of my wedding. She tried to justify her actions as a mere prank to test my loyalty for my fiance, but I got no chills. I asked her to get out of my wedding. She tried to resist it, saying, I can explain, listen to me. And then it was, Where am I supposed to go? My flight is tomorrow. This place is in the middle of nowhere. How could you ask me to leave knowing that I have traveled so far? My wedding venue was in the city outskirts. It would have been difficult for her to find a ride back to the city from the place, but it's not deserted as she was making it out to be. She has a habit of playing victim. She called me mean and spiteful. I screamed, I don't care. I don't care what the F you do. All I want is for you to take your effing butt out of here. I also made it clear that not only was she out of my wedding, but also out of my life. I have no place for people who go behind my back and ruin my relationship. My family and friends calmed me down. 
Sam and I spent some alone time and reassured our feelings for each other. The rest of the day was great. We got married and it was the most beautiful moment of our lives. Right after that, we went to our honeymoon. It was for two weeks long. However, all this while, there was one thought lingering in my mind. Just throwing Margo out of the wedding was not enough. I needed to do more. How did she even think of stealing my husband? I want to rip her apart. How cleverly she planned everything to crawl into my husband's pants. I just can't wait for karma to take its course. I want to be the karma. Any ideas, guys? Testing loyalty at your wedding is not just inappropriate. It's downright disrespectful. You did the right thing by standing up for yourself and your marriage. It's tough to realize that someone you considered a close friend would pull a stunt like that, especially on such an important day. You handled the situation with strength by kicking her out, OP. It shows you're not willing to tolerate toxic behavior, and that's a crucial step in protecting your relationship with Sam. Update 1. After posting it here, I discussed my vindictive thoughts with Sam, and he was like, why not tell her boyfriend about her truth? I completely missed this angle that Margaret had been dating this guy, Kevin, for a few years now, and they had been living together. I realized, right, not only had she betrayed me, but also Kevin, who had no idea what kind of person she truly was. Kevin and I met a few times, but he's a little introvert guy, so we never got to talk much. He deserved to know her true and ugly color. I should have done it immediately, but better late than never. There was one more challenge this guy was not on social media except LinkedIn. I don't have his number. I sent him a request, which never got accepted. I waited for his response for days, but then I realized he wasn't active on LinkedIn either. But luckily, Sam found his number through public directories, and we managed to get to him. I called him up during office hours, thinking Margo wouldn't be around that time. He didn't respond. However, he called back after work before heading home. I didn't want to leave a text because God knows what lies Margo fed him, and what if he blocked me or something? He called and I narrated the entire incident to him. Right from the nuance she created in the pre-wedding games to her outrageous move on my husband. He was silent the whole time, and when he spoke, he was literally choking. He didn't anticipate this to be coming. It would be an understatement to say he was shocked. He was speechless. I asked him what reason did she give for arriving early from my wedding. He said she arrived as per the schedule and didn't say anything about the fallout. She showed him the pre-wedding pictures and said on the wedding day her phone was dead so she didn't click any pictures. She told him that the photographer would send all the pictures after processing. He didn't dig too much into it and let it slide. Quite understandable. Why would he be so interested to see my wedding pictures? He saw the pictures of the other events so no red flag was raised. I apologize for bursting his bubble, but he thanked me for taking so much trouble to reach out to him and expose his girlfriend. He said he would take the matter further with her because what she did was unacceptable. She cannot just test someone's fiance without any discussion with their partner. He said, it looked like she was recording it only to manipulate and exploit Sam later in case anything happened between them. I hate to admit this, but I felt the same. A few hours later, Margot started blowing my phone with texts and calls. I was away from my phone for a while and I came back to find countless voicemails. She was calling me names and said I was manipulating and brainwashing Kevin against her. I replied, you tried to steal my man, how could I let this slide? And blocked her. Later that night, Kevin called me back and gave me more details about Margot's loose behavior. Apparently this wasn't the first time Margot had done something inappropriate. Kevin revealed that she had a history of being over flirtatious with his friends. He had caught her once, years ago, being too friendly with one of his old roommates. Back then, he had let it slide thinking she was an extrovert, and this was how she behaved normally and Margot had brushed it off as a healthy flirt. He couldn't believe she was capable of cheating. Hearing what she had done to Sam though, that was the last straw for him. Kevin was furious. He told me he was done with her, that he couldn't marry someone so manipulative and untrustworthy. He had broken up with her and had moved out with his essentials. He was planning to take out the rest of his stuff from the house and leave her alone. He also told me they were planning for marriage next year, but now he was better all alone. I felt sorry for him, but I think it's better he got to know the truth before he enters into a marital bond with her. Divorce is complicated. He dodged a bullet. Good on you for reaching out to Kevin and sharing the truth with him. He definitely deserved to know who he was really dealing with. It sounds like Margo's behavior was far from isolated, and it's good that Kevin was able to see through her manipulation before committing further. As for Margot, blocking her was definitely a smart move. You don't need that kind of negativity in your life. Update 2 I can't believe this woman had the audacity to show up at my house. No, there was no remorse. No sorry and stuff. The entitled queen was furious. She was screaming at me standing on my porch. 
She looked more unhinged than ever. According to her, I had no right to tell Kevin what had happened. She accused me of overreacting and spiteful. She said, Whatever happened, it's happened he there. You took your revenge by humiliating me in front of everyone and kicking me out of the resort. You didn't even listen to my side. I was watching out for you, and this is what you give me in return? You have no idea how I managed to come out of that deserted place. Yet, you went behind my back and poisoned my boyfriend. You ruined my future. Were you planning to get married next year? Why did you do this to me? You're a terrible person. Who doesn't care about anyone? I wanted to yell back at her, but she looked miserable and desperate. My blood was boiling, yet I tried to keep my composure and told her that I didn't ruin her life. It was she who ruined everything about herself and her boyfriend. She tried to seduce my fiancé on my wedding day. What else did she expect from me? Kindness and forgiveness and love? She brought this wrath on herself. But she didn't want to hear it. She kept blaming me, saying I had destroyed her relationship and that I was the reason Kevin had left her. She claimed that if I had just kept quiet, they would still be together and that I had unnecessarily blown it out of proportion. She wasn't able to keep her lies consistent. Sometimes, she said, I had mistaken her and punished her for being caring as she was just testing Sam's loyalty. Then in the next breath, she said it was just a stupid mistake and I was punishing her over and over again. She stood at my door asking me to come out and fix it. She wanted me to call Kevin and plead on her behalf to take her back. I said that was the last thing I would ever do and I'm glad that Kevin broke up with you. He deserves so much better. Look at her audacity. How could she expect me to fix her relationship when she was the one who tried to sabotage mine? She was adamant on a point that I had poisoned Kevin's ear and now I should fix it. How? By admitting that it was all false? Why would I do that? I didn't lie a word. It was all true. I said the final words, you made a choice and you are facing its repercussions, so deal with it. I slammed the door in her face. She did scream and call me all the names under the sun, but eventually left saying, I'd regret ruining her life and karma would come hunting for me. It sounds scary when someone says this, I don't regret anything. In fact, I felt relieved that I helped Kevin see the truth about his girlfriend. I saved his life from getting ruined. Yikes, OP. It's wild that she showed up at your house with such a sense of entitlement. It sounds like she's really trying to flip the narrative and play the victim when she's the one who caused all the chaos. It's telling that she has no remorse for her actions, just a desperate attempt to deflect blame. You handled it with incredible composure. It's not easy to face someone who's clearly unhinged and still stand your ground. Margot's instability to accept responsibility just shows how deeply she's wrapped up in her own self-justification. The fact that she expected you to fix her mess after she tried to sabotage your relationship is truly audacious. What would you have done? Thank you for joining us today in the R Lounge. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time. And please put your chair back where you found it.